Hey you guys, this is Josh. And Josh, Carolyn's not here today. Welcome to this week's episode of the Pantry Chat Food for Thought. Carolyn's got the day off and we're gonna be talking about weed management strategy today. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about managing those pesky weeds in the garden. And uh, I've got some different ideas for you, I think. So uh, we'll get to that in just a few minutes. You can see Carolyn's not here today. She's taking a much needed day off and I'm missing her. I've got nobody to chit chat with. Um, I hope you guys are doing good. We're doing great around here. There's just a ton of projects going on. Um, it's been a very wet, rainy spring. The garden is actually going pretty slow. It's just a slow start, but it's doing pretty good. And um, yeah, it's just springtime on the homestead and we're getting things done. So um, I'm gonna breeze right on through the chit chat. And for those of you that might be new, usually my wife Carolyn is here with me. And if you wanna just get right to topic, just scroll down in the description and everything is time stamped, and you can jump right ahead to the points that you would like to listen to. But uh, before we get into main topic, we usually answer a question of the day. And today's question is from Ian Emis Ferry on the springtime in the cottage garden video that Carolyn did. And uh, Ian Emis is asking, what did you make your little garden signs out of? And we've got one right here that Ian is talking about. You know what? Super simple. My son made this for Carolyn as a Christmas gift. These are just little cedar one by ones and some uh, plywood, some eighth inch, inch thick plywood that uh, we painted. You know, he painted actually, I didn't do any of this and stapled on there and just some good Sharpie permanent marker. And um, we had a few of these actually, we got the idea from some of them that were on the property when we got here and we tried to improve upon it a little bit and these should last a really, really long time and they can always be painted over and remarked if they need to. But cedar's the key, because that cedar's just not gonna rot out very fast. And those are really easy to make at home. All righty, so diving right in to weed management strategies. I don't know about you guys, but I probably spend most of my time in the garden over the years uh, dealing with weeds, but I've gotten that down to where it's less and less. And if you manage your overall garden well, you can actually reduce, probably not ever eliminate, but you can actually reduce your weed strategy, your weed load, and the time you have to spend over them dr dramatically. Uh, this garden right here is our second year. Um, for those of you that haven't been following us for long, we bought this property two years ago, and this is our second year on the garden. It really takes three to four years to get a garden really cranking and tuned up if it wasn't cared for before. And it's kind of the same with the weeds. You've got to work at it a little bit to get them under control. But with the methods I'm about to tell you about, for this time of year, we probably are having at least 70% less weed pressure than we did last year when we were first getting this garden going. And so there's some key things you can do. But before we jump into that, let's talk about for a minute, what are weeds? So really a weed is anything you don't want in your garden, right? It just doesn't belong there for whatever reason. It's in the way, it's competition. Um, it, you know, it may take up resources. And um, it's just anything that you don't want there. The other side of weeds that a lot of people don't really think about is that every plant there has a value. It has a purpose in the natural cycle. And um, sometimes you might be able to use those to your benefit um, or even enjoy them as you are managing them, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, but to start, the first thing you wanna to do to deal with weeds actually has nothing to do with pulling weeds. It has to do with how you manage your soil. Every time that you turn the ground over, every time that you disturb it much past the surface, so every time that you're plowing or that you're tilling or that you're raking deeply and digging into the soil, you are stirring up weeds. 
Nature has put seeds in the ground to cover the ground. Uh, that's the way it was designed, that the ground would cover itself, and they are there, that we call them reparative. And they are usually very good at drawing up nutrients from deep down in the ground, bringing them up, they're annual, so they're gonna die back, and they're actually gonna start to build topsoil by bringing nutrients up, dying back, and putting organic matter on the surface. So those guys are supposed to be there. They, they um, fill a very important purpose in natural systems, and you can use that to your advantage at times, but in an annual vegetable garden, um, we're trying to obviously grow uh, productive food for the table and weeds do get in the way of that. So the number one strategy is to stop tilling your soil. Stop turning the ground over. Every time you turn the ground over, you are bringing fresh seeds to the surface and you're gonna be dealing with them anew. And so you wanna minimize tilling and soil disturbance. Um, the next thing is good soil tilth by developing healthy soil. And so in no-till no method, you're generally going to be building soil up and you might be doing um, soil loosening practices like with a broad fork. Um, things like that, they're going to help keep that soil aerated and keep a good tilth to it, a good workability, uh, along with building nutrients and organic matter. And that makes the weeds, as you do get to dealing with them, much easier to get out of the ground. So no tilling and build up a good healthy soil with soil tilth. Those two things right there are going to get you way, way ahead. The next step that's really, really important is getting into your garden every day. Your feet, your eyes, and your hands, and getting out there and observing your garden for a few minutes every single day. You need to make it a part of your routine. I like to do it early in the morning. It's a great time as the day's getting to go out. It's relaxing as the day's getting going. It's a great time to go out. It's relaxing. It's peaceful. And I can take a while and meander through the garden and take care of a few rows. I'm observing the plants, the health of things. Um, if I'm having any pest problems, any uh, biological part problems with the plants, and I'm dealing with weeds as I go along. And that, that leads into the next strategy, which is removing weeds when they are small. It is so easy when you're walking through your garden and observing and taking your time just to pull out the weeds as they're coming up. If, if, if the ground isn't hard, you can pull those weeds up, weeds up by the root very easily and just toss them into the pathway where they're gonna get trampled on. So if you're out there every day, they're not gonna reroot, and you're just adding to the soil, adding to everything in the garden, composting those by leaving them there, and they're very, very easy to bring up. And that, that just, that takes care of a lot of it. But particularly in a first year garden, you're probably not gonna stay ahead of them that way if you have not been practicing no-till. And even if you have, um, depending on your environment, they still get going. So get in there, pull them by hand. And one thing to note, I am coming at this from the point of view of a no-till garden that is generally mulched. Most of my garden is gonna stay under mulch and um, that's going to shape your practices because uh, different kinds of hoeing aren't going to work so well a lot of times in that mulch. So um, we are, I am discussing it from that angle. Um, so pulling them when they're small again is really the easiest thing that you can do. Um, if you're going to hoe, I personally like a hula hoe and that's the next step. Um, maybe you've got a lot in an area, maybe they're in your pathways, um, maybe you don't have a lot of time, maybe your back's bad and bending over that much is just not working for you. Um, there are times when, when hoeing works pretty well. I do very little of that in my garden, but when I do, I prefer a hula hoe or a stirrup hoe. And that's really easy to go across the top of the ground without turning things over a little bit and cut those roots off at the surface. Problem is, is that while it does kill some of them, some of them spring back from the roots, and so pulling them when they're young is much more effective. Another method is uh, cultivation. I do very little of that because of my garden practices, but certainly in market gardening, and if you are having bare soil, there's uh, all kinds of different cultivators, depending on the size of your garden, your planting strategies that you can use. 
Um, that disturbs the soil more than I would like to during the growing season, so I don't practice that. Um, it, it's, it's just the hoe once in a while if I need it. Now, all that said, you can deal with most of your weeds um, with those methods right there. If you are just diligent, you're getting out there every day, you're observing, you're pulling them when they're small, you, you're going to stay pretty well ahead of them. But here's the deal. Sometimes life gets ahead of us. Sometimes we just don't have time to do that. Sometimes we get distracted. And when the heat of summer comes, those weeds really get going. And sometimes they get ahead of, the, ahead of us. And pulling them becomes no longer an option because you do not want to disturb the roots of the plants around you, your garden plants. And you've got to come at it another way. That hoeing with that hula hoe or whatever type of hoe you like uh, is one way. But another thing you can do is start to just chop and drop your weeds. And um, that can be a great method. And that is just to cut them down and actually use them for mulch. And I have done that in my garden, uh, especially in early gardens where the garden season's gotten going. Um, I'm, I'm developing the garden beds. I haven't got it mulched and the weeds really get out of control easily on me. Going through and cutting them down. Um, you're probably gonna have to do that by hand. Um, with some scissors or some clippers or something. Uh, you obviously got to be careful about a weed whacker, but sometimes I've been able to do that in the rows. And here's where you can, one way, you can really put the weeds to work for you. Because again, remember, those guys are doing a job. They've got to function in nature. They are mining nutrients and bringing it to the surface. So why don't you turn that into an asset and use it for you where you can then cut those weeds down. Obviously you need to do this before they go to seed, but by cutting them down and laying them on the ground, you are covering your soil. So you're getting it mulched if you haven't already. And that is starting to help retain moisture. That is cooling the soil temps in that season when weeds are really getting going because they like that hot weather. And you're really doing a lot of moderation, um, not to mention that those weeds are there, they'll dry up. You can either leave them there to decompost if you're doing a no-till method, or you can add them to a compost pile and break them down and you've, you've generated organic matter. And I've actually done this in the garden on purpose before and let the weeds get to that size just to create the biomass, to create some ground cover, some shading for my plants. And, and that's just adding organic matter to the system. And that can be a really great way to go. That's just chop and drop. Now, problem is once they're that big, a lot of those weeds are gonna continue to come back because they've got a developed root structure. Um, but that is better than just letting them go. Now, whatever you do, you wanna do everything you can to not let your weeds go to seed. So if they're getting ahead of you, don't panic, but do your best to get ahead of them and at least get them down before they go to seed. Because if you let, if you stop those from going to seed and you start no-till practices, you're just not gonna have the weed pressure. As time goes by, those weeds that are near the surface will have come up and, and um, sprouted and you will have dealt with them. And then you lose the seed bank near the top of the soil. And if you're not disturbing the soil, those seeds down low aren't getting the conditions they need to sprout up. And so again, over time, this is a, a long-term strategy, um, you're gonna start having less and less weed pressure. Now here's the deal though, there are always gonna be some weeds. There is no way to completely get rid of weeds and we don't wanna be using any kind of chemical herbicides in our garden. So this is where just having a long-term perspective, being patient, learning to work with nature and realize that you're always gonna be employing some sort of strategy to deal with the things that are growing in the garden that you don't want. But take some of these ideas and learn how to apply them to your own situation. And another one I'm just realizing that I didn't write down is a lot of your weeds are useful. They're edible um, or even medicinal. Lamb's quarter is a common weed that is edible as are some of the mallows. Um, we've got a purslane here that I love to snack on and I actually enjoy as the season goes by and some of those weeds inevitably get ahead of me and they get a little bit bigger. I enjoy going through and pulling the purslane and snacking on it in the lamb's quarter. Those are just a few that come to mind but um, research what is in your garden and how can you make use of some of those things. 
Um, again, the uh, say the purslane, like I mentioned, I have actually let that grow through the season till just about seed because it's low growing and it, um, it's low ground cover and it covers the ground. That's really, really helpful. And then before it seeds, I get out there and make sure I spend a day and pull it all up. And I've actually created some biomass. So there's a lot of ways here to approach it. Think holistically, um, think of taking care of your soil and building healthy soil. Work on getting out into the garden every day enjoying being there, enjoying everything that's around you, enjoy learning about what's coming up in your garden even though you didn't plan it, and find a strategy that works for you. So that's about it for today. I know that's a little bit short for a pantry chat, but I've got nobody to bounce ideas off of today and talk it through with, so thanks for hanging with me. And as the season goes by, I'm actually gonna let a few of my garden beds back here uh, grow weeds and I'm going to take you on a visual and take you through some of these strategies once they're here and uh, we'll step through it in the different beds and I'll show you how some of these strategies play out. So um, I hope you guys have a good week. I hope you're having a successful garden season and I look forward to seeing you here and getting Carolyn back with me soon. Goodbye.